Hey, hey, cabin crew. Welcome to another episode of the Conversation Cabin Podcast. I'm your fearless host, Farah, and along beside me today for our first episode together is my daughter, Sierra, who is our new co-host. If you missed the live announcement, say hello. Hello. So coming into this, what are your first thoughts? Um, I'm really excited. It's an interesting topic, which I personally have been interested in for a while. I'm excited to talk about it, especially with my mom. Awesome. I'm so excited too. So the topic that we are going to cover today, Sierra was the one that brought it to my attention months ago. We're going to do a deep dive into the intriguing and often chilling waters of Lake Lanier. Nestled in the heart of Georgia, Lake Lanier is a man-made reservoir that has been a popular destination for water enthusiasts since its creation in the 1950s. But beneath its serene surface and picturesque surroundings, lies a history as deep and complex as the lake itself. Yep. From its inception to the present day, Lake Lanier has been shrouded in mystery and folklore. It's not just a body of water, it's a reservoir of stories, some factual, some legendary, that have shaped the local culture and captured the imagination of people far and wide. And in this episode, we'll be exploring these stories from the historical facts surrounding the lake's creation to the eerie legends that have sprung up over time. We'll delve into tales of ghostly apparitions, unexplained phenomena, and even rumors of an underwater ghost town lurking beneath the lake's surface. Our aim is not just to entertain, but also to shed light on this fascinating body of water and its place in Georgia's history. It has so much crazy history. There is so much that I found on this place and it's just a wonder why it's haunted. So whether you're a history buff, a lover of legends, or simply someone who enjoys a good mystery, we invite you to join us on this journey beneath the surface of Lake Lanier. So sit back, relax, and let us guide you through the history and legends of Lake Lanier. Welcome to the Conversation Cabin Podcast. This is the history and legends of Lake Lanier. Exploring the mysteries beneath the surface starts now. Loftus, a family says something crashed into their backyard, prompting them to call 911, saying they saw creatures walk the beach debris. Jeffrey Dunn. And tomorrow, a man named Ted Bundy was going to die in Florida's electric chair. (laughs) Shut it down. This is ridiculous, folks. They either. They do exist, but they don't exist. They keep telling us they don't exist, right, but they're not here. The the issues that are facing Black America, and the reason that you are bringing them up in this room is because it is an attempt to make the election all about race. And, and you know the subject, and you should, and, 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 and you should do that also. And it's just knowing people who are on red. We want to look inside the country and find out what is specific enough. Those 28 girls hospitalized after playing with Ouija boards at their school in Columbia. <laughs> The Conversation Cabin Podcast. All right, let's get started. Sierra, tell us how you came to learn about the story of Lake Lanier. I have a friend that you know of, Sydney, who lives in Atlanta, and she had been there before. I, 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 you know, I have my page on TikTok and a lot of stuff came up about Lake Lanier and it wasn't about just Lake Lanier. How did it start? Hold on. Let me rethink. I would go on my TikTok and then I, I follow some paranormal sites and I remember something came out about the deadliest or haunted places or lakes. I can't remember exactly what it was, but a lot of people in the comments were saying, how come Lake Lanier is not on here? It's 
the most haunted of all. And many comments on and on of people just kept saying the same thing of, I don't know why it's not covered. I don't know why people never really talk about it. And it's something that is very widely known by the people that live there. That's never to go there. It's never talked about. When I started researching it, yeah, I was surprised how many other bodies of water are haunted and they're always in YouTube channels and mysteries and haunted places. But this place wasn't. And I think it has the most deaths of any Mm -hmm. lake. But let me just give everybody a rundown of this place. Lake Lanier is 37,000 acres, 58 square miles. The deepest point is at 158 feet. And what we're going to uncover today is why is it haunted? Why does it have so many ghost stories coming out of this place, so many accidents and tragedies. It has even claimed a whole town. What do you want to add to that, Sierra? The conspiracy in my mind is it attracts 10 million visitors annually and also brings in about $5 billion to North Georgia. As you see, as we go on with something with such a terrible history and all these stories and the wide range of things that have happened in and under this lake, you can see why maybe they won't want to dig up the past. And especially because it brings in so much money to the state. So I also feel like that could definitely be a reason there nobody wants to dig up old bones it is a place where the tourist industry there is crazy for as many deaths that has been there and we're talking over 700 deaths in this place which Mm -hmm. is yeah that's not it was an expansive body of water which was initiated in the 50s when the United States Congress passed the Rivers and Harbors Act. It authorized the construction of the dam for purposes of flood control, hydroelectric power, and navigation. It was also named after poet Sidney Lanier and spans across five counties. So it's Hall County, Forsyth, Dawson, Gwinnett, and Lumpkin. Lake Lanier covers an impressive area of approximately 150 square miles. And what happened there was crushing. There was a town called Oscarville. 250 families were uprooted from the creation of this lake. 15 businesses, 20 cemeteries. Before it was built, it was Forsyth County, which was a wealthy county, mostly white dominated. And then Oscarville is where a lot of the African American community settled at. They brought farming culture, cotton, vegetables. But I thought it was really important to bring this up because the things that I did see on Lake Lanier, much wasn't said about the African American history. Yes, exactly. The research that I did as well, I'm the type of person that looks into the comments of things. And a lot of people are saying that the Black history is being completely overshadowed. A lot of people are wondering why that's not brought up. And it needs to be. That is a huge part of that area of that lake. It was built over three towns that I saw myself, Oscarville, Storesville, and Absalom, which also included tons of graveyards there as well. Oscarville was thriving when it was there. It was full of carpenters. It was full of farmers, blacksmiths. And that was until they got ran out by White Forsyth County residents. It was a very sad history. There was an Oprah show that was dedicated to it long in the 80s or 90s. I'm probably 90s. It was a lot of people that were ancestors of the people that had been there. One lady had said, I remember they weren't run out. Yes, exactly. They were burning down churches, schools. Who would want to stay around that? So yes, they were completely run out. Then something really awful happened. We're about to get into that. Especially today when a lot of racial things are starting to come up more 
it's always been here in this country, but I find it really shitty that everyone talks about Lake Lanier, like the white predominant part of Lake Lanier. Not only are they trying to wipe out what happened, they're trying to even change the name of it. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was really shitty. Do know this, the Cherokee Nation inhabited this land mm -hmm. until the 1830s when the infamous Trail of Tears forced them to relocate paving the way for European settlers. A lady named Ms. Russell, who is a historian from the area, said, a haunting is sometimes defined as something that is difficult to ignore or forget, something that is poignant and evocative. The real haunting in this story is how history has made it impossible to ignore what was done to the land in North Georgia. Once a land of wild rivers, North Georgia is now broken with dams and human-made bodies of water that change the ecosystem. Once a land that belonged to the indigenous people, it is now buried under the water, making recovering of lost culture impossible. So what do you feel about that statement? A hundred percent. As we go on, there's mo there's multiple things that you could say, oh, that's why. This is the things that people are scared of. But honestly, there is so much history in this one place. It hurts your heart and it's sad to hear. I definitely think she's right. I thought this was an important story to bring up. And I think Sierra came across the same story as I did. So we'll both touch on it. Back in September of 1912, there was a 18 year old white girl mm -hmm. named May Crow. It's really sad that you have to say white girl, black something because it's got so diverse when really it should be any act of crime against a woman, a man. It's bad. It doesn't matter what the skin color. But back to the story. May Crow was found injured and assaulted in the woods less than a mile away from her home. She was deceased. Even though there were no witnesses, no evidence, a 24-year-old black man, Rob Edwards, was arrested and taken to jail for the crime. And even though there were no witnesses, no evidence, a 24-year-old black man Rob named Edwards. Rob Edwards, right, mm -hmm. was arrested and taken to jail for the crime. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and pick up Sierra. Tell a little bit about the story too. Edwards was then taken from the county to jail by a mob of white residents brutally beaten with crowbars, shot repeatedly, and dragged to the town square where his body was lynched. Additionally, Edward's wife, Jane Daniel, their neighbor, Ed Collins, Jane's cousin, Oscar Daniel, and Oscar Daniel's cousin, Ernest Knox, were arrested. Knox and Oscar Daniel, both, by the way, were teens, were convicted by all white juries before being hung in front of about 5,000 spectators. In the aftermath of those brutal killings, residents were forced out of their homes, which is most likely why they wanted to cover up that sad history with the flooding of the land and creating of a lake. My first question is, how in the world do you get arrested for just being a neighbor of an alleged suspect? I think Oscar Daniel and mm -hmm. then her cousin, Ernest Knox. But that just goes to show how bad racism was just because they're Black and live next door or they're related and they all live in the same house, then you must have had something to do with it. It was Forsyth County was a predominantly white, rich, wealthy people. And then you have these successful Black community here that is thriving off of what they're doing for their community. They're already trying to force them out for that land just like the Native Americans were before that. They find this white woman, which, I mean, back then, if something happened to a white woman back then, the thing was to go to a Black community and start pointing fingers. It was awful. And so sad. Rob Edwards was the person that was accused without witnesses or evidence. He was taken away. And that was more of an excuse for them. And started happening, burning of everything. They wanted that land. Right. The burning of everything was after 
Jane Ernest Knox, Oscar Daniel were arrested. They were convicted by an all white jury and then also drug out in front of everyone mm -hmm. and hung. Our justice system was really shitty back then. There was no justice system. The black community were hiding away in the churches, which then the white people decided to burn the churches down, burn the black owned business down. Let's accuse this guy. It's a very tragic story. It definitely needs to be brought to light more. It's good for you to know everything that happened up until now because why wouldn't it be haunted? Like you said earlier, the history is haunting. I would haunt it. Did you know that there's a whole racetrack underneath that lake? No, I didn't see that anywhere. Yes, it's crazy. There's a racetrack under this lake. A couple other things that I came up with. Right. These white people that went on a crusade of burning all these black businesses and black churches, they were called the Night Riders. That was the group of them that went out and did these horrible things. And then back to some things underneath that lake, there are trees that are 60 feet tall. Yeah, I was looking up on YouTube underwater dives because a lot of people dive there and record it and do things like that. These massive trees and grave markers, old cemetery things. You can just see street signs, cars. Honestly, I would be too scared to dive. I would even going on the lake, just being near that body of water with so much stuff under it. Look at some of the YouTube videos. It's actually pretty scary. This is a whole town, so yeah. you're right. It's very scary. Some of the videos that I have watched was about droughts. I guess whenever there's times that it doesn't rain much, the water goes lower, and that's when you have a lot of accidents. People are driving their boats really fast at night, and guess what? They end up hitting a damn tree. I don't think I could personally go in that lake even swimming. Just knowing what I know now, there was a diver named Buck Buchanan. He's an experienced diver. When he goes underwater, being that there's no visibility at all when you go diving under this water too, he has felt body part. He would yeah. reach out, feel like an arm or a leg, and then it wouldn't move. When I was younger... I didn't care so much about creepy things, but now that I'm older, maybe it is. That's the reason why I am. When you jump from somewhere high and it makes you go underwater almost to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I used to be so freaking scared to jump off a high dive and go in the lake where I used to live. Do you just wonder what you're going to see down there? I don't go in it. If I can't see where my feet are, even if I can't see my hand right below me, I'm not going in. About what you said about Buck, I was looking up comments on TikTok of the videos of it. And a lot of people were saying that they feel grab them or grab their legs. They feel like they are being pulled down. A mother, I had mentioned on the episode before when we just briefly talked about it, but a mother saw her hand, the force of her child being pulled down in the water, a four-year-old. She was like, no, you don't understand. I saw the force. His leg was being yanked. You can't easily mistake that. You don't go down and back with your leg. She saw the force of him being dragged under. Luckily, she grabbed him. She said it was like somebody was pulling him under. That's terrifying. You know what that reminds me of? The part in Friday the 13th where Jason comes up out of the water, reaches in the boat for the girl or guy, forget which one, and pulls them off the boat into the water. That's the first thing I thought of was Jason Voorhees' Crystal Lake. When you start looking at the statistics of the accidents, my God, there is so many. According to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, there were 157 boating accidents reported on Lake Lanier in 2020 alone. The boating and drownings, just so many tragedies. No one really knows if alcohol has ever been a major player in it. I say a lot of people, I keep seeing the excuse of alcohol. And Did you see if they're trying to prohibit it or not? I know that there's a margarita bill there. It was really popular, but now they're prohibiting. I'm pretty sure they're thinking about closing it down or 
they at least close down swimming where it, like a part of the Margaret. I don't blame them. You're just from there. If I'm fucking drunk, let me go and just wander into the lake, which PSA, you should not be swimming when you're drinking. You shouldn't be driving a boat. It could definitely be alcohol. That could be some, but that many? Like, I'm sure the percentage is low. There was this one in 1999, a collision of two boats that killed nine people. And then there was a 2012 incident where a young boy was killed by a boater under the influence of alcohol. In 2023, there were three people that died within a week, all unrelated. I really pray for these families. A lot of people don't go near it, but it's also a freak accident. I think something weird is at play, though. I don't know. Over 700 deaths. Even if you want to say or believe that there is just some type of curse there. That's what I would say. If it was anything that I had to pinpoint, it would be the town that was lost. A lot of innocent people had to die for that lake to be created, uprooted from their home their business is gone, their livelihood gone. As much as you don't want to say the government was responsible, they were a contributing factor to a lot of the tragedy. And did you see that last year it was announced that one of the lake's rescue teams will no longer be using divers for underwater rescues. Instead, to decrease the risk to the divers, they're going to be using robots for underwater rescues. Not only is there a risk to anybody swimming there, there's a risk to the people that are going to help recover people. If that doesn't tell you something right there that they're scared to even send experienced people, like that should tell you why would you even go swimming in there? Was, divers aren't drunk, so what's the risk to them? They see something down there that they don't like. I can honestly say that a curse would be the thing that could relate to the accidents and the hauntings. Those divers have probably gone down there and see things that they don't even want to talk about. I don't blame them because I couldn't be a diver, first of all. I can't do that, have all the gear on when you're down underneath the water because I feel like I'm claustrophobic. If we really think about it, we could sit here and say it's it's somebody being drunk. But honestly, if you take a step back and look at it, it could be the Native American land from the very beginning, a sacred land that people were forced out of. Then we could say it was Oscarville, which many people lost their lives and homes to in a tragic way. Many people have mysteriously died there in weird ways, drownings or alcohol fuel. We could also say it was the Lady of the Lake ate. Susie Roberts and Delilah Mae Parker Young drowned in the lake. They were on the bridge, which was newly built. Susie was wearing a blue dress. She'd lost control of the car. And people report of seeing a lost woman in a blue dress who is missing her hands. A year later, a body was found wearing a blue dress and missing her hands. They discovered that it was Susie. Later on, we're looking for Delilah Mae Parker and they were able to find her. Her body was still in there. There's a bunch of weird things that you could say is the cause of it. I remember a couple years ago, that reminds me of some story that I did hear about two women that were together, went off the bridge. The only way that they were identified by the car and they found jewelry on them. It might be a different story, but I don't think there's too many stories of two women that drive off the road. Some other ghost stories, there are children sightings around Lake Lanier. These spirits are the souls of children who drowned in the lake over the years. Visitors have reported hearing laughter, seeing small figures running along the water's edge. People feel strange occurrences, temperature fluctuations, sounds, talking, whispering. I wish I could go there to do an investigation. I saw a someone's comment under a video that said they always see a rat in the middle of the lake in the middle of the night and then it disappears off into the distance they said they've seen it multiple times they said they hear church bells coming from under the water they hear them ringing constantly a lot of those churches were burnt down to get the the black community out of there that's pretty freaky and you do hear different stories across the world the divers that go down to pearl harbor 
go underneath there, they can still hear machine running and hear taps like the guys are still banging on the ships to get out. It's scary when something so tragic happens there that spear can remain trapped in that place and for a very long time be happening under that lake because that's a whole town completely covered up. I saw multiple people saying they saw the lady of the lake. I don't think there's many bodies of water that can carry a history of a town being formed, people living in it, making their lives, making their families, their homes, and then it just being flooded. That's just horrible. It's such a huge tourist attraction. All these people are saying they hear all these things, see all these things. And to top it off, they have the facts with it is that so many people are losing their lives there every year. This is something that is not being shut down. Why? Obviously, there's the money aspect to it. You had told me before, Tamika Foster, Usher's ex-wife, lost her six-year-old son there. And she is rallying for it to be drained dug up and rebuilt why won't they do that if something brings in a billion dollars each year you could easily afford to do that. even the accidents involving the trees that are under there we need maintenance on this but they do not want to dig up that path i believe the mom that said she saw something drag her son underwater it's such a sad history underneath and it you have a really good point. Why wouldn't you make the safety for your patrons? What do you think brings those people there, knowing all the tragic history? Or even if they don't know about Oscarville? I've seen conflicting things. Do people not do their research before they go swimming somewhere? I see Georgia natives that say they've grown up on that. That's where they learn to swim. They're saying this is all just fairy tale myths and whatnot. I would like to see a medium, a real medium, go out there and do a reading and mm. see what they feel. So as we draw the curtain... On this fascinating journey through time, it's clear that Lake Lanier is more than just a body of water. It's a reservoir of history, legends, mysteries that continue to captivate the imagination. From its creation in the 1950s to the countless tales of ghostly apparitions and unexplained phenomena, Lake Lanier is a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown. We delved into its murky waters, explored its haunted islands, and navigated its treacherous waters. We've heard tales of ghostly apparitions, mysterious disappearances, and eerie underwater towns. We've learned about the lake's tumultuous past and its impact on surrounding communities, and through it all, we've discovered a world teeming with intrigue and mystery. But as with any good story, the more we uncover, the more questions we're left with. What other secrets does Lake Lanier hold? Are there more ghostly tales waiting to be told? And what about those who claim to have seen strange creatures lurking in its depths? These are questions that may never be fully answered, but... They certainly add to the mystique of this enigmatic body of water. As we bid farewell to Lake Lanier for now, let's remember it's not just for its beauty or recreational value, but it's for its rich tapestry of history and legends. Let's remember it as a place where fact meets fiction, where reality blurs with myth, and where every ripple on the surface Hints at a deeper story waiting to be told. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Conversation Cabin podcast. Your curiosity, enthusiasm, fuel our exploration into these captivating topics. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the history and legends of Lake Lanier as much as we have. Make sure to tune in next Thursday when we cover the Illuminati. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Conversation Cabin Podcast. We hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Remember, sharing is caring. By sharing our show with your friends, family, and on social networks, you're not only spreading the joy of great content, but also supporting your favorite podcast. It's a simple and free way to help us grow our listener base and reach even more people with our conversations. If you have a scary experience or encounter that you'd like to share, we'd love to hear from you. 
email us at theconversationcabin at gmail.com. For everything Cabin Crew, visit our link tree. You can find it in our show notes. If you want to take your support to the next level and become an official member of the Cabin Crew, consider visiting our Patreon page. For a limited time, we're offering one tier for just $4.99. And this tier grants you access to bonus episodes, live shows, VIP sessions, merch Patreon shoutouts, and more. Additional tiers will be coming soon as we prepare to launch Potapalooza, a special monthly treat featuring roundtable discussions on hot topics with fellow podcasters. To stay up to date with new episodes, make sure to follow the show. Also, add us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter X. And one last thing, please make sure you leave a rating or review. Until next time, cabin crew, explore your strange.